So we get to finally talk about the PlayStation P, the PlayStation Portable or PSP, depending on which way you kind of look at it. And I will definitely tell you, the original Sony PlayStation Portable was one of the coolest consoles ever made. I was a big fan of this console when it first came out, but I was a more I was probably more of a fan of the Nintendo DS Lite because that's the one I had at that moment. But the PSP, I was always jealous of and always fond of because this thing just seemed like everything I'd ever wanted in a console. The graphics were crazy to me at the time, and having something like this that was portable, that could access the internet, and you could kind of have like somewhat of a store inside of it too, was exactly what I wanted from a console, and I was very jealous of those things at the time. But because I had the DS Lite, I always had to make myself feel better and like always watch reviews and videos of like, oh, why the DS Lite is better than the PSP back in the day like 2008, 2009, 2007. And I would say a lot of that is the reason why I even started YouTube in the first place, which is kind of funny. But enough about me, the PlayStation Portable, probably one of the most impactful portable consoles. The run between the PSP and the DS Lite was absolutely crazy to me. And a lot of people not only are still in love with the PSP, I mean, you're watching this video, so you're kind of interested in it, but the games behind this console is what makes a console. And that's why the you know emulators of the PSP and even now that Apple has allowed kind of some side loading or some like applications and emulators inside their app store is only going to make the PSP even more popular. Even people who weren't around during the PSP era are probably going to start playing PlayStation P games because of the uh, you know openness of the app store now from the Apple side. So let's go and see how the hardware, the PSP, the original one, the PSP 1000, whatever you want to call it, let's see how this particular console holds up in 2024. The first thing I'll definitely start off with is the outside. This console I thought looked beautiful when it first came out, and even now when I pick this thing up and I kind of mess around with it, I'm still actually very, very happy with the way this console has aged. It was a very minimalistic kind of console. There wasn't like any crazy colors or like novelty features that kind of you would look at and be like, oh my god, this thing has not aged that well. I would look at the original Nintendo DS, which was what this thing was kind of competing with. That console physically has not aged that well. Clearly it does not look that great. The PSP on the other hand looks beautiful still. It still looks like a very good looking console. And that's a very cool thing going on here. It had the piano black type of you know texture to it. And I think beyond a lot of things, it looked like such a beautiful console at that time, and it still looks very nice. You're getting a pretty large display at that time too. It was a single display, it was not like a multi-display like the DS Lite. On the left side, you're getting the D-pad. You're also getting a joystick here, which in and of itself was a really big reason why people liked the PSP over the DS Lite. Although maybe some games didn't have the best joystick controls, you were still getting that on the PSP, which some other consoles weren't giving you that at that time. And for a portable console, it was actually really, really nice to have that type of capability inside of this type of device. On the right side, you were getting your triangle, square, X, and circle buttons on that side, which again was very nice. At the top, you were getting your triggers left and right. At the very bottom, you were getting your volume buttons, the start you know, menu button and home button as well. Very good stuff. I mean, that's exactly what you'd expect from this type of console. And I was very happy with the way this console looked like from that particular perspective. On the bottom, you were getting your standard type of like keychain adapter if you wanted to have a lanyard on it, which was pretty cool. But you were also getting your power source adapter. A little bit different. It was an AC adapter, which was really nice. But I remember my AC adapter was working fine. My DS Lite, though, I've always had issues charging it for some reason. But this one, perfectly fine. Never really had any issues with my PSP. But I didn't have a PSP when I had my DS Lite. I had a PSP many, many, many years later. On the right side of the PSP, that's when you had a power button and a hold button as well, which is honestly very cool to have. On the back side, this is the reason, or one of the reasons, why I really like the PSP was that removable battery. You were able to go through and just remove that battery if you want to and just slap in another battery if you really wanted to inside that console. I think that was a very cool thing that Sony kind of threw in in their first couple PSPs. I think with their PSP Go they removed it and then with their PSP that they didn't allow us to have it. But with the PSP, the original one, we had that type of capability. Now I think the reason why they removed it was because of the whole entire modding issue and like their custom firmware and the, what was it called, like Pandora battery or whatever that you know mod was called. That was kind of a cool thing that was going on for our Sony PSPs at the time. But keep in mind, that really isn't the you know thing that we're doing anymore. I mean, that's not a, I mean, you can still mod your PSPs, but again, it just really depends if it's even worth modding anymore. But I will say that battery and removable battery, very, very cool thing to have inside of your console. You were also getting an SD card or like a memory card expansion tool on here. I forgot it was the Memory Stick Pro Duo. 
it was a kind of proprietary for the most part, which was kind of annoying. But I remember there was a way for me, it was like cheaper to go and buy an SD card and an adapter for the Memory Pro Stick Duo rather than actually going through and actually purchasing the Memory Stick Duo, which was kind of funny. But for the most part, I will tell you, I like this particular console, for, especially from the exterior standpoint, and I think it holds up very, very well. The only thing is, is that the game selection of this console was very interesting. When it first came out, you had those UMDs. That was very nice. I liked it. The fact that you could go and slide in full-on discs inside of this console was really nice. And I think it's aged very interestingly because the CDs with the UMD, I don't think was the best approach. And I think Sony knew that and they eventually tried to switch away from it. But for several generations, we had those UMDs. There were lots of issues going on with them. And I remember taking out UMDs and putting them in my PSP. It seemed like I was like breaking the console every time I was doing that. Whereas on my DS Lite, I could just slide in a cartridge and slide it out. And I think that has aged a lot better throughout the years than this particular console with the UMD slot. And like I said, I think Sony know, knew this and they changed it with the PlayStation Vita and they were trying to move away from it digitally with the PS, with the PlayStation you know, P Go. But I will tell you, you know, discs are perfectly fine, but the way you were inputting the disc inside of this wasn't really, I mean, it seemed like, like I said, like every time I was putting in a you know disc, it seemed like I was breaking it. It was like a sling action that was opening it up. But regardless of that, actually going through the menus and playing games, there were so many games you could play on this thing. And this was the first generation of this kind. So when it first came out, there wasn't like, and it wasn't like when the when the last PlayStation you know portable came out. It wasn't like that. There were games that were being made for this thing all over the place, which was really cool. I think at this time there were lots of developers for this console too. And you have to remember some of the best-selling games of you know the, the time were also available on the PSP, you know, 1000. You had a lot of PlayStation 1 games that were available on this console, and because this thing came out kind of around the PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3 time, it was kind of considered almost like a PlayStation 2 portable, which was very cool. And I remember alongside the PlayStation 3, this console was still being sold, and I remember a lot of people at the time were saying the graphics of the PlayStation 3 were very similar to the PlayStation B, or vice versa. And it's funny because looking back, clearly the PS3 graphics were better, but it's crazy to us to think that this console was kind of in that realm. Clearly the PSP's graphics weren't the best, but for a portable console, you were getting very good graphics on this type of console, which was very, very nice. And that was one thing I was always jealous of. I was always jealous how much better the PSP's graphics were than the PlayStation you know, P's. And I remember there were so many games that came out for both consoles. And when I looked at the PSP version of the game and I looked at the DS Lite version of the game, the PSP's graphics were just, just that game looked so much better on that console because it had so much more power. But I look at a console like the Nintendo DS Lite, I'm still very happy about it. But man, that PSP, completely different level when it kind of came down to it. So when I look at the PSP, even the original one, I'm still a very big fan of it. I think this console is still worth buying whether you want to play games, a collector's item, whichever way you want to look at it, I think there are lots of reasons why you should buy something like a PSP. Now, if you just want to play the games, like I said, you can always go for an emulator, and it's never really been easier to play those games, you know, play PSP games on your particular device. But I would say that if you're in the market, you can't really go wrong with buying a used PSP. I recommend buying it. They're kind of pricey now, but still they're worth buying. And if you're collectors, it makes even more sense to buy it. But I like the original PSP. I think it, you know, carved out a lot of people's childhood. A lot of people love playing it. And honestly, I'm very happy Sony at least delved into the portable market for a while, even though they're not really in it anymore. They're kind of are, I guess, with the PlayStation Portal. I'm still a big fan of the PSP, though, and I, I think you should definitely consider buying it for sure. So that kind of covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.